uh, as you can see, today's topic is uh, different than the one that you saw in the agenda, but this is more interesting and in more detail, and it's about an indirect measurement methodology to uh, identify load fluctuations on axial turbine runner blades. So this uh, project was supported by uh, SVC and uh, it's uh, part of results that I obtained during my uh, PhD project. Uh, and uh, we did this project during five months from uh, February to June. 2020 and uh, Michel Cervantes was my main supervisor uh, supervisor during this project. Uh, today's outline is here. I'm gonna uh, talk briefly about the introduction of the topic and uh, the research question. Uh, for this project, then uh, I'm going to move on to uh, a short description on uh, U9 measurement campaign that we performed uh, almost two years ago, and then uh, moving to results and then uh, a small conclusion. As you know, the penetration of uh, intermittent uh, energy sources seriously impacts the energy balance as well as the stability of the electrical grid these days. So uh, a smooth integration of this share of renewable energy sources into existing power grids is, is needed and therefore hydropower uh, plants are one of the key components for stabilizing the electrical grid. As a result, the extended operations and, and uh, the flexibility of hydraulic turbines that we have been discussing since this morning have increased and hydraulic turbines are subjected to uh, honest, unstable uh, flow conditions and high load fluctuations, uh, particularly at uh, off-design conditions. However, these turbines are designed to operate uh, at a certain operating points for a specific head and discharge, which is known as best efficiency point. But due to the, the mentioned argument, the off-design operation of hydraulic turbines, uh, ranging from startup, spin no load, moving to part load, full load, and different load variations, and uh, lots of stops and uh, runaway uh, conditions uh, is increased. So there's an obvious need in, in predicting the load fluctuations during these off-design operating conditions, particularly on uh, runner blades, uh, to prevent uh, harmful operating points and, and predict the refurbishment uh, period of uh, turbine runner blades. This project was uh, basically initiated to propose a measurement methodology in which the blade loading can be predicted by performing uh, measurements on the shaft. The goals that we followed in this project are uh, the analysis of measurement results that we obtained uh, from Perus U9 Kaplan unit during uh, steady state operating points on the runner and on the shaft, we had different type of sensors on the rotating and stationary parts. We had strain uh, measurements on the blade, pressure measurement on the blade. We had torsion, bending and axial strain measurement on the shaft. And we also had uh, proximity probes installed uh, close to the turbine bearing on the stationary reference of frame. Then the goal was to relate the measurement that we perform on the blade to the one on the shaft during uh, steady state uh, operations. For those of you who are not familiar with this unit, uh, Perus U9 is a Kaplan prototype turbine, which has been designed in late 90s. Uh, this turbine is uh, part of Perus power plant located uh, along the Lule River and mainly used for uh, research and development. Uh, you can see in the picture uh, on the right, 
the the unit is is uh, specified by uh, red dash line box. This 10 megawatt unit has uh, 55 uh, meters head, uh, 20 cubic meter per second uh, flow rate and uh, rotational frequency of uh, 10 hertz. A short view of uh, instrumentation and type of sensors that we use in this experiment uh, is going to be discussed uh, here in the next slide. Uh, if uh, you look for the details of the DAC system and, and sensors, you can find it in my PhD thesis. Uh, mainly in this campaign, we used uh, three DAC systems, two on the uh, rotating uh, components and, and uh, one was installed in the stationary. So the first one installed on, the, on top of the shaft, which you can see here, uh, it was connected to the turbine shaft, uh, rotating with the same frequency of the turbine to receive the signals from the sensors installed on the blade, which were pressure and uh, string gauges. Uh, another rotating unit was installed on the shaft between uh, two uh, guide bearings to receive the signals from uh, string gauges that we installed on the shaft and uh, the stationary unit here uh, was used for uh, turbine rotational speed uh, signal and also other general parameters that we obtained from the control room for this unit. Here we have uh, the location and the number of uh, sensors that we used on this unit. Uh, on the left figure, you see the location of uh, the pressure sensors. We, in, in total, we had 12 pressure uh, sensors, six on the pressure side and six, six uh, on the suction side. And then in the middle, you see uh, the string gauges. In total, again, we had 12 string gauges in uh, three different locations in radial and tangential direction and it was again installed on both pressure side and suction side. Here in the right, you see four axial string gauges uh, and two torsion string gauges, which were installed on the shaft to measure the axial load bending in two directions and also the uh, torque of the shaft. And at the bottom, you see the positioning of the distance probe uh, close to the turbine guide bearing. Basically, Kaplan turbines are uh, propeller turbines with adjustable uh, runner blade angle for having wide range of operation with higher efficiency. Uh, therefore, you can have different combination of uh, runner blade angle and guide vane opening. In this measurement campaign, we covered many operating points beginning from startup, spin no load to runway, shutdown, and uh, lots of uh, transient operations, load variations. Uh, however, in this project, the experimental result is based on 11 steady uh, operating points selected from these three propeller curves that you can see here uh, to the left. Uh, this red line is uh, presenting the cam curve uh, and on that we had uh, three uh, on cam operating points, OP0, OP3 and OP8 here. And beside that we had uh, eight uh, off cam operations, four located on this propeller curve and four locating on this propeller curve. So in, in total, we have 11 operating points that on the right, you can see the guide vane opening for different operating points, starting from OP0 to uh, OP10. The results, in fact, the results uh, are divided into two sections. Uh, 
uh, in this presentation, uh, time average and peak-to-peak -peak results, and then uh, frequency spectra of the results. Here we start with the time average results. Uh, in the left, you see the normalized uh, time average pressure variation on the runner blade pressure side for uh, OP0 to OP10. Uh, as you can see, the pressure increases for all the pressure transducer for operating points OP1 to OP5. As expected, these results are just for uh, checking the, the general trend of the variations uh, by having uh, by by increasing the flow rate to just see the trend, and you can see that the the pressure increases on on the blade by increasing the turbine discharge. However, uh, we see different uh, pattern for this propeller curve. Uh, OP6 to OP10, but still we have one pressure sensor located on the leading edge of the uh, the runner blade that shows similar behavior as the previous propeller curve. Another result that we saw in in this uh, pressure variation it was the the pressure value for OP0, which is uh, considered the part load operation. Uh, you see that uh, although we have really low discharge, uh, still we have uh, high pressure value on the runner blade, which should be due to having uh, a runner blade angle uh, quite uh, in, in a quite close position. And then on the right, uh, we have time average strain variation. Uh, on the blades obtained from uh, four different string gauges during steady operating conditions. As you can see, the, the variation of uh, the strain on the blade in, in radial and tangential directions uh, for each propeller curve uh, is different. This shows that the uh, discharge is not the only parameter affecting the strain on the blade. Here we have uh, the time average parameters on the shaft that you can see uh, in the left, we have the axial strain and to the right, we have torsion strains uh, uh, as expected. Uh, the axial and torsion for each propeller curve increasing by increasing the uh, turbine discharge. Uh, interestingly, the as, as you can see to the left, the axial strain on the shaft at different on cam uh, operating points, which are high, highlighted by, by uh, red dashed line boxes, uh, is rather constant, although different guide vane opening and, and the runner blade pitch angle were assigned to the operating points. Uh, here we have two uh, bending in two directions like axial and, and uh, torsional strain variation, the bending uh, strain also in the X and Y direction generally is increasing uh, with the guide vane opening. Here we move on to peak to peak values uh, from the fatigue and, and uh, dynamic point of view. Load fluctuations on the runner blades are more important than uh, absolute mag magnitudes. So the peak to peak uh, normalized uh, pressure and, and uh, strain uh, are shown in, in this slide. To the left, we have the peak to peak normalized pressure amplitude obtained on the runner. Uh, you see that the trend of uh, the peak to peak variation on, on the second, this propeller curve and third propeller curve is different. In in uh, in middle, you see that the uh, the peak to peak variation is rather symmetric uh, with respect to uh, BP OP3 of that uh, operating uh, propeller curve. Uh, however, in in the third propeller curve, uh, with the larger blade angle 
uh, we have li large peak-to-peak uh, -peak values uh, obtained at OP6 and OP7 compared to OP9 and, and uh, OP10, which indicates that uh, uh, there is a severe uh, uh, rotating vortex rope, which causes this uh, large pressure fluctuation. And to the right, we see that uh, the peak-to-peak -peak value strain value, uh, amplitude variation uh, on the blade for, again, four uh, different string gauges. Yeah, you see that the higher peak-to-peak -peak strain amplitude uh, around 100 and 150 microns are obtained at the location close to the blade hub in the tangential directions specified by this uh, uh, black squares. It can also be observed that the minimum uh, pressure and strain fluctuations on the runner blade at each propeller curve correspond to the BEP of that propeller uh, curve specified by uh, the red dashed line boxes in the figures that you can see for OP8, OP3, again here OP8 and OP3. So we looked at the peak-to-peak -peak value on the blade. Now we move on and look at the peak-to-peak -peak values of the strain uh, on the shaft. In this slide, uh, we have the peak. Uh, we have the peak-to-peak -peak value for axial strain in the left and torsion in the right. Uh, you can see that uh, local minimums also observed in, in uh, this result. Uh, which uh, happen at OP3 and OP8 for uh, both cases. Uh, this result showed that the operating points that have minimum peak-to-peak -peak strain amplitude on, on the shaft and also peak-to-peak -peak pressure and strain uh, amplitude on the blade are identical and correspond to BP point of the propeller curves. It's a similar result for bending that you can see this this minimum happens at OP3, uh, OP3 and, and OP8. As previously mentioned, the main purpose of this project is to find a possible relation uh, between the measurements on the shaft and the runner blade. So a non-dimensional uh, number called SR is defined to assess this ratio the ratio of the peak-to-peak -peak strain amplitude obtained on the runner blade, which is called S-blade, uh, uh, and the torsion strain obtain, obtained on the shaft. So this figure to the right, this shows that the variation of SR number, which is normalized by the SR value of the propeller curve, uh, propeller curves BP, OP3 and OP8, uh, for four string gauges installed on the runner blade. Also a different trend is observed for two propeller curves. Uh, this R variation of four string gauges is similar, except for OP9 and OP10, which are high, which are considered high load operations. In, in other words, we can say that this result shows that the ratio of strain fluctuation on the runner blade at different locations for different operating point is similar. Sorry, Arash, I have to interrupt you. Um, yep. We are running a bit late in the program, so if you could uh, wrap it up more or less. Yeah, that's uh, that's the last last result. Yeah. OK, that would be yeah. great. Thanks. Uh, so beside the strain correlation between the blade and the shaft measurement, torsion measurements uh, on the shaft showed uh, to be a good candidate for uh, index test testing on Kaplan turbines. Uh, the figure to the left uh, shows the index test obtained from the same unit uh, by Sueco. Uh, on the right, you have the experimental results that we obtained uh, from this unit. And uh, you can see the, uh, the inverse of peak-to-peak uh, -peak, uh, torsion strain amplitude uh, in, in the y-axis and uh, the output power in the, in the x-axis and uh, by this uh, red lines, you can see the guideline variation. So by this result, you can see that uh, local maximums are observed for each propeller curve, 
corresponding to the BP of, of the prop worker. So this can be a good indication for updating the index uh, test chart for Kaplan turbines. Uh, <laughs> Then I'll just move on to the table which shows uh, the hydraulic phenomena that we observed uh, by different uh, sensors. Here we specified six different dominant frequency, RVR synchronous mode frequency, uh, the second mode of uh, synchronous mode and uh, the rotating mode and the runner rotational uh, frequency, the second mode, and finally the guide vane passing frequency. As you can see, the pressure and string gauge on the blade detected all the phenomena. And interestingly, we had axial uh, strain and torsion results, which showed axial strain measurement on the shaft can detect all the phenomena within the studied range, and torsion strain also captured most of the phenomena. So if, if I want to wrap my presentation, I would say a successful measurement campaign was performed on the Porus U9 uh, Kaplan prototype turbine covering several operating conditions. Uh, for any propeller curve of a Kaplan turbine, we saw that the guide vane opening corresponding to the minimum pressure and uh, strain fluctuations on the runner blade can be obtained by measurement on the shaft by axial torsion and bending measurement. And also we saw that the torsion measurement uh, on the shaft could be a good indicator for index test in Kaplan turbines. And finally, a signature of every phenomena observed in the data obtained on the runner is found on the data on the shaft, which is really good because we can predict what's going on inside the turbine chamber. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arash. Thank you. Uh, very much interesting data there and uh, and promising conclusions also, I must say. Uh, there's a huge difference, of course, between measuring on the shaft and measuring on the, the runner blades themselves. So um, very interesting results. Uh, no questions now in the chat and we're running a bit behind on time and we want to not keep you away from your lunch.